Hey guys, this is Jim K and 4YCD and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Today I want to talk about the MFJ 1708. And this is basically a transmit receive switch and it actually even says that right on the front, duh. This is the older model. There are newer models with a couple of different options and we'll talk about those briefly. What this allows you to do is to hook up your main antenna to this connector here in the middle. And then over here is your radio. This lead goes to the antenna input on your radio and this goes to your SDR. And this box will operate two different ways. One of the ways, and it, and it runs on 12 volts DC. So you can hook it to a battery or if you have a power plug cable or a wall ward, either way, any 12 volts will work. The, the box, this box has a couple of adjustments on it. So it has a delay, so we can set our delay. Uh, and then we have a way to hardwire our PTT line into the box off of your radio. So what that does is when you key down, that PTT line um, enables and it switches this device from, um, from the SDR connection, it turns it off. It just takes this to ground. So this is out of the circuit, not connected at all. So you can transmit on your radio and antenna system without affecting your SDR. This just completely isolates the SDR connection. If you have the PTT line on, that will work. And then the other way this works is it also has RF sensing in it. And that's basically what the delay is for. Although I suspect it works with the PTT line as well. Why you'd want to delay in the PTT line, I don't know. What you get out of this is you can have your SDR hooked up and be using some software like um, SDR Sharp or HD SDR, or whatever the SDR app of your choice is on whatever operating system uh, you care about. And I can use my SDR software to tune across the band. Now, last week I did a video about connecting up to the IF interface on the radio and how that works. And if you recall, with the IF interface hooked up, I can't tune basically off band from where the radio is because that changes the bandwidth of the, uh, of the IF. So if I'm on 40 meters on the radio, I'm limited to looking at that same 40 meter slice on the SDR. I can't go look at 10 meters while the radio is on 40 meters because the IF is not in that range. With a device like this, I can do that. So I can independently tune my SDR to a completely different band. I can be monitoring 10 meters and, and be having a QSO or do an FT8 on a completely different band um, at the same time. So that's pretty cool. The newer versions of this switch give you a few different options. The new model is the uh, 1708B SDR. And I think it has slightly better isolation and a few other features. And I don't remember what they are because I don't have one. And it also has different connector options on the newer model. So you can get this in N-Type or SMA. Um, I know they have one model where the antenna and the radio connections are both N or PL259. And the SDR connection is SMA. Or these are both N and that's SMA, etc, etc. So there's some options there. Now, where this really comes in handy, you recall from the video last week, I tapped the IF interface on my Kenwood 570D here behind us. Kenwood made it super easy. It's in the service manual, what that connector is, where it is, and it's sitting there with nothing connected to it. So it was a simple matter for me to put a, a two pin connector on it and tap it straight into my SDR radio. If you don't have a convenient SDR or IF interface connector in your radio, then this is a way to use your SDR as a pan adapter and to monitor essentially two radios at one time without having to tap into your IF on the radio if you have a radio that doesn't have one readily available. There are a lot of models, all radios are gonna have an IF, but not all radios are gonna have an IF that is easily attachable by an end user without popping the case on the radio and doing some, uh, some brain surgery. It may not be something you're comfortable with either. So that's what this gives you. Okay, I've got our test setup rigged here. And what we've got here is our MFJ1708 device and he's plugged into 12 volts. We have a MFJ digital power meter, the 849 model that shows us digital um, readouts, easier to read. Our Kenwood is set on 10 meters. Uh, there's no traffic on 10 right now, so we're gonna use that. 
All right, so we're set at 20 watts output power on 10 meter band. K and 4 YCD test, 1, 2, 3, 4. Test, 1, 2, 3, 4. Nothing. Absolutely zero. Didn't even twitch. Let's go ahead and roll the dice and put that guy up all the way. So now we're putting 100 watts into this box. This is rated for 200 watts, by the way. KN4 YCD test, 1, 2, 3, 4. KN4 YCD test, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we got no power out. So I think we're good to go to hook up an SDR. I'll be right back. So here we are in SDR Uno, and I'm using an RSP1A SDR device right now. And we're tuned in the SDR to the FT8 frequency, which you can hear. Let me turn him down. And over here, on the radio, we have a bunch of guys talking. Hey, Roger that. I appreciate it. So, uh, so the radio is on 40 meters. The SDR is on 20 meters and they both are working independently and that is because of our switch. Now, let me turn the volume back up on the SDR. Let me tune off frequency from those guys. And when I key up, my power set to five watts. You can see it pretty much drops our SDR connection. And when I let up, it comes back. So that, that time, let's mute him, that time is for how long it takes this thing before he lets up and comes back, takes the circuit out of ground and comes back to the SDR. I think this is a great thing if you are not comfortable opening up your radio and, and digging out the IF interface, if you don't have an IF interface that's accessible. What's going on? I've got this tied into DX to a DX cluster right now so I can actually see some spots coming up here on the band. And I can go listen to these independently of what the radio is tuned on. So that is just super cool. The other thing, and like uh, the program I showed the other day, um, HDSDR, I can also tie this to OmniRig so that this will do cat control for the radio. There's a benefit to having it on the same band as the radio. If I have the radio on 20 meters, I can see all this spectrum on 20 meters. And the same kind of thing applies. Oh, I see a lot of traffic over here. This is good for something like a contest day, right? Or, uh, you know, like that, where I can jump over where I see a lot of traffic happening and get in on that conversation and make a cue so or two that way. But one of those $25 dongles off of Amazon will work just as well. And if you don't like or can't run SDR Uno, then there are 20, 30 other SDR programs for every operating system that anybody uses, Linux, Windows, and Mac. So no reason that you cannot have a beautiful pan adapter for your rig, no matter how old it is or what functionality it doesn't have. Guys, that's all I've got for today. I appreciate you watching. If you would give me a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and ring that bell so you get notified whenever I post any new content. 73, y'all.